Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. Uh, I'm in my 28th year hosting a radio program called Work with Marty Nemco on an NPR affiliate in San Francisco, uh, KELWFM. And I thought it'd be fun to do a brief uh, ad lib uh, video for you here on some of what I think are the keys to uh, doing a good job on the radio, at least one guy's opinion. Uh, first, I want to talk about my audio essays. Um, I do think that uh, a, that audio essays are, are uh, a really useful tool for uh, expressing your views and the most important thing I want to tell you here is to think about what is not obvious the media is justly criticized for speaking with one voice and so ask yourself what's something on which you have a strong belief and perhaps an unconventional opinion or have unconventional data something that is like that and is important to you that you'd like to uh, opine on and then I encourage you to not script it, just like I'm not scripting with you now. I'm just talking to you. But have a brief outline in front of you and aim for between one and three minutes. But I have occasionally gone as long as 10 minutes when I decided to uh, do a, an, article, an essay called Marketing is Evil, which I do believe. And I gave example after example. And there was something about the cumulative effect of all those examples that I felt justified the time. So think about inserting audio essays on the non-obvious yet important, important not just to you, but important to your listeners or viewers if you've got TV. Obviously, a lot of what I'm saying here has relevance to TV as well. The second thing I want to talk about is interviewing guests. I am very wary of, uh, of interviewing PhDs, especially professor types, because they tend to be long-winded and get into the weeds too much. So you really need to be very careful to find somebody, if you're trying to get an expert, who's really expert, but who's also practical and not long-winded. To help my guests not be long-winded, I teach them the traffic light rule. I tell them, and, and this I, I send it to them in the, in the confirmation email that I send them, that, confirming their guest appearance. I say, during the first 30 seconds of an utterance, your light is green. They're listening, they're paying attention. During the second 30 seconds, their light is yellow. After all, they're listening to the radio. They may be listening with one ear. They're starting to space out or maybe think you're long-winded. And at 60 seconds, your light is red. You probably should stop or ask me a question. That ensures that the conversation is more like a dialogue and an exchange and vibrant rather than a series of lecturettes. That can be really helpful. The other metaphor that I use with my guests, which they, which they find very helpful, is I want you to think of this as a conversation between two people having their third beer together at a bar. That it really enables you to get the right level of informality and also tends to engender candor, which of course is very important. Too often guests, especially if they've got a lot of media experience, they tend to reflexively go into their quote stump speech, where they're just saying the same points. So that helps. Also, I try to put my I try to ask questions that deviate from what, for example, very often the book if somebody's written a book, the publicist says sample questions. I really try to deviate that and I try to think from that and think about what are the hard questions that would force the person out of their normal box, but yet is interesting to me as a human being and also interesting to my audience? One other little thing about interviewing. Um, very often what I try to do is I try to uh, ask easy question, easy question in the beginning. Uh, and I, I don't try to be confrontational. If I'm, if I, I, like to have, I like to have conversations where we're synergistic. We're basically building on each other. That said... There's always one or two hard questions that are probing, and it could indeed either reveal information that the person would rather not reveal. Uh, uh, I'll just say that. And that, I try to insert that question normally toward the end of the interview when I've established trust, and, and I've clearly shown that I'm on their side. I'm not trying to screw them. Um, I will ask it then, or right after they've laughed, we've had a good interaction, I'll slip in that hard question there. My, maybe my favorite example of that is when I had Maury Wills, the, the legendary Dodger baseball uh, player, on. And after a bunch of easy questions about, you know, about, you know, how he steals bases and whatever, I then say, you know, the, the, the Dodgers, which you, you played for for so many years, always had a reputation of the pitchers throwing spitballs, but they could never catch them. I said, I, I, do you have any idea how? He said, yeah. He said, it was me. I kept an emery cloth in my baseball glove. And when they would throw the ball around the infield after a strikeout, I would scuff up the baseball and throw it to the pitcher. 
Now, that's, an, uh, that's the kind of admission that would keep somebody out of the Hall of Fame, maybe even be a Pete Rose, get him thrown out of uh, baseballs, whatever, um, elite. And yet he said, he, yeah, he said that. So that's that. Um, now, callers. I, I simply want to say this. I, you, I take a certain amount of heat for interrupting callers, um, but I really feel that my major responsibility is not to the caller, it's to the listeners. So I'm constantly thinking, is letting this person talk a good use of their time? I also try to strive for extreme honesty. If it's one thing I'm known for, and I pay a price because some of the people think I'm annoying, I'm obnoxious for doing this. You'll get radical honest to me. I, I am effusive in praise when I agree with something, and I am uh, quite critical and direct uh, when I don't agree. Uh, and my show is a, is a helper. My call is I do what I call workovers. People call in to get help with their work life. And so instead of the typical nicey, nicey counselor talk, I'm very direct. If I think their goal is delusional, I won't say delusional. I'll say, you know, are you really thinking this is realistic? You've got three kids. You don't have a college degree. Frankly, you're not the most verbal person in the world. And you say you'd like to be a talk show host. So I can be like that if I, if necessary. But more often, I am, I'm listening my butt off. And listening is really important in a talk show host. I am listening my butt off, whether it be to my guest or a caller. And then, if necessary, interrupting. I'll say, I got it. And then I will say, ask my next question. So we're back and forth, back and forth, and I'm able to find that I, I am able to help my clients my clients and my, my listeners quite readily that way. The other thing I did was I chose a niche show. I've been doing this show, as I said, for 28 years. It is focused on two things, education and mainly now career stuff. So having done these workovers so long, I'm able to intuit a lot of, you know, I can read between the lines. I can get to the point very quickly and help clients and, and callers in a remarkably quick amount of time. So I invite you, if you're not currently a, show, a host or you, or you are one and you're looking to kind of pivot, pick a niche, something you care a lot about that might, you know, also draw a large enough listenership and become enough, stay with that and make it be a real expert at that so your calls can be crisper. Anyway, that's all I really want to say. I do like to keep things short. Um, so that's all I want to say. Have fun doing, I mean, I, I, it, is such a, it is such a joy uh, to do, uh, to have a microphone in front of you. Uh, and you don't need to be too scripted. You notice I didn't script the thing here. I don't script on my radio at all, on my radio show. I invite you to prepare, but don't over prepare and have fun. In the end, having fun if you use that as a criterion, that's often going to help you screen out the kind of guests or the kind of calls or the kind of focus that is, good, is then going to be ending up not being good radio. Anyway, that's it. I'm Marty Namco.